Um, should I give it to you now or? Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, guys, uh, we'll start uh, Revi's uh, proposal, def uh, the first proposal. And um, thank you very much for uh, the committee members who have joined online. Um, the rest of the committee is here. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Shade. And thank you, everyone, for taking your time to uh, join the defense. Uh, before uh, Going into the presentation, I would like to give a brief introduction about my committee members as some of them have not met each other. Dr. Amit Sheth, my advisor, uh, founder of AI Institute, professor at Computer Science Department, University of South Carolina. Dr. Biplav Srivastava, faculty at AI Institute, professor at Computer Science Department, University of South Carolina. Dr. Vignesh Narayanan, uh, who's, also, uh, who's also a faculty at uh, AI Institute and uh, uh, assistant Professor at University of South Carolina, Dr. Suparna Bhattacharya, who has joined us online as a Vice President Chill Fellow at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and Dr. Swati Padi, Postdoctoral Researcher at uh, Ohio State University. So moving on to the presentation, I'm here to defend my proposal titled Explainable Process Recommendation through Multi-Contextual Grounding of Multimodal Process Knowledge Graphs. Starting with a motivating use case, let's say a user with diabetes would like to know whether they can have a particular food item or not. So it would be helpful for the user if the question is answered along with the detailed analysis of ingredients, cooking actions, and other elements present in the, uh, present in the food item. So given a particular food item is not suitable to the user, it would also be helpful to the user if uh, the, uh, the recipe is revised and the alternative, uh, alternative suggestions are provided or a whole set of alternative recipes that most closely resembles a given, a given uh, input recipe would be helpful. So in order for a recommender to do so, it needs to have access to the uh, recipes, recipe text and images, and also knowledge sources about the ingredients and cooking actions present in them. To put it specifically, the recommender would require procedural representation that explicitly captures the interaction among the cooking actions and ingredients. And the recommender should also have access to knowledge sources so that the elements can be uh, analyzed in multiple contexts. For example, potato is a healthy carbohydrate, also has high glycemic index, and deep frying introduces trans fat. Potato plus deep frying uh, 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 results in vitamin A and C loss, and what also this particular recipe means to the user's health condition and food preferences. And recommender should also be able to handle the multimodal information, images, and text. And in order to ensure the trustworthiness of the user and safety of the system, the recipe recommendation should also be recent and the source of knowledge where this, uh, sorry, the sources of where the knowledge is coming from should also be presented to the user. And going to a different domain, all of us here work in AI modeling. So group of us here at AI Institute work on um, building small scale LLMs uh, in the clinical domain. It would be helpful for us if we can go and query somewhere pipelines executed for clinical LAMA models so that we can benchmark against it. And the following list of recommendation is provided where pipeline one and pipeline two. And uh, by pipeline, we mean that includes not just the models, but also data set, what are the metrics used, sorry, what are the metrics obtained, what are the hyperparameters used and, and so on. And in order to not waste time and compute resource of the user, if the reasoning is provided based on why this pipeline is relevant or uh, relevant to the given input query, it would be helpful for the user so that if the, based on the reasoning provided, if that's not the what the user is looking for, uh, they can go and identify alternate set of pipelines to seed their experiments with. 
And in order for a recommender to do so, it needs to have access to metadata of AI pipelines and knowledge sources about the artifacts that goes into the pipeline. By artifacts, we mean model, data set, and other, uh, other artifacts that pipeline generally contains. So put it specifically, here also, the recommender requires procedural representation of the pipeline that's, uh, that captures the interaction among the model, data set, metrics, and other artifacts present in the pipeline. And uh, here, the models and data sets are to be analyzed in multiple contexts. So the recommender should also have access to this multi-contextual knowledge sources. And recommender should be able to handle multi-model data, such as text, numerical data as well, because metrics are in the form of numerics, and figures uh, figures of the pipelines as well, because generally figures are presented along with the published documentation. And uh, uh, finally, in order to ensure trustworthiness and safety of the system, explanations of these pipeline recommendations should also be provided. Now, from both of these use cases, it is evident that we are trying to do a recommendation over process models and also uh, trying to provide explanations on top of it. Hence, explainable process recommendation, the, the, the uh, title of the uh, dissertation as well. And now that we want to build an explainable process recommendation system, what are the challenges involved in it? To start with, we would like to uh, build a graph that uh, explicitly captures the interaction among the artifacts presented in a procedural manner. So in order to construct this graph, the entities need to be extracted and readily available from the natural language text. But such information is not, such detailed annotated information is not available in all the domains. And with the growth of internet, uh, and the pace at which the data is growing, it is not possible to rely on the humans to uh, keep annotating the data as it is coming by. And the uh, size of the models are also growing at a rapid pace. And given that we constructed the graph, the name potato alone is not telling me a lot of information about it. So it has a lot of contextual meaning associated with it, meaning, uh, so for example, it's a root vegetable, uh, it's a healthy carbohydrate, has high glycemic index, what's the nutrition uh, content of potato, and, and so on. So this multi-contextual knowledge is spread across all over the internet. How do we identify them and bring them together in a meaningful manner so that it can be used for explanation, uh, more specifically reasoning? And given that we want to do explainable recommendation, we have a lot of data formats here. Uh, some are in the form of graph, some are in the form of text, some are in the form of numeric, and some are in the form of, of uh, images as well. How do we bring them together, consolidate them in a meaningful manner for explainable process recommendation? Now, let's see what has been done in the literature to solve this problem. There are uh, quite a few works in process recommendation. But most process recommendation work seems to reduce the problem as node prediction, given a sequence of nodes, predict the next node, or given a list of sentences which represent the node labels, predict the next node label. And one work utilized a star based pruning algorithm to rank the process models based on behavioral similarity. So given a set of nodes, what is the order these nodes are utilized for the execution of a process that is defined as behavioral similarity. And one other work uh, utilize TF IDF based similarity metric based on user's execution history. Uh, the list of tasks the user has executed, compute a TF IDF with the list of tasks that are present in the database, and identify relevant uh, processes used for those tasks and recommend that to the user. Now, most of this has been uh, solved or utilized in uh, business process modeling use cases and some in smart manufacturing as well. And uh, there are also a list of works on process similarity because essentially process similarity is the core of uh, process recommendation. There are natural language based uh, uh, similarity computation, which utilizes the text information from the node and identify uh, similarity based on node embeddings and graph structure based similarity that identifies larger subgraph between two uh, process graphs or uh, behavior-based similarity where traces of process executions are used or graph distances such as cophenetic distance or graphic di gra graphic distance or graph isomorphism. Now, given that we saw uh, what has been done in the literature, the challenges that we pose still seem to remain for the explainable process recommendation work that we have. So mapping these to the research aim, can we complement the limited ground truth data using domain knowledge for entity extraction? And can we identify these multi-contextual knowledge sources and ground the entities present in the uh, process knowledge graph uh, to construct a multi-contextually grounded process knowledge graph? And uh, given that we constructed this graph, can we utilize this graph for explainable process recommendation? So the corresponding research aim one and two, three are as follows. And in order to execute this research uh, list of research aim, 
uh, we bring the thesis statement, a neurosymbolic approach for explainable process recommendation through multi-contextual grounding of multi-model process knowledge graphs to enable reasoning, traceability, and enhance for enhanced recommendation and trustworthiness. And uh, in order to execute this thesis statement, we propose the following framework, which consists of a process graph construction module and grounding module, which identifies knowledge sources about the entities present in the process graph and ground the entities to construct the process knowledge graph. And we also have a query handling uh, frame, a query handling pipeline. The purpose of and purpose and working of all of these will become more evident in the following slides. Now we would have become evident that we are trying to solve this problem in two use cases. One is uh, food recommendation and the other one is AI pipeline recommendation. And we also saw a lot of terms in the thesis statement. Let's go over them one by one and see what this means in uh, each of the domains. So a process graph in cooking looks as follows. It consists of... So I have a question. Uh, two slides back. Mm -hmm. the, uh, this one? Yeah. Next slide. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who's the user for the explanation? Who are you trying to explain? Uh, to the users itself. So when we provide a recommendation, uh, whichever user is using the system, we are trying to reason or justify why the list of recommendation that we provided is uh, relevant to what the input query given by the user. So what would be a good explanation to the user? Do they take the process back of feedback or do mm -hmm. they... How do you know that you have a good explanation? Um, basically collecting through the use of feedback most likely, but uh, whether we have a good recommendation, sorry, good explanation or not, uh, I think it most closely relates to the format of it, in my opinion, because we are just using a list of knowledge sources to use the recommendation. If additional knowledge sources to be added based on uh, user's health condition, put preferences, of course, I think that needs to be taken as a feedback loop. So. Let's make this a little bit more. Sure. So in a Google search, mm -hmm. right, the, the mark of a good recommendation or answer is that you've chosen the that answer. Right, right. Are you feeling lucky? So oh, let's take the first one. Right, okay. right. In this particular case, because explanation is a very subjective thing, mm -hmm. uh, do you want to kind of say what is the ideal answer here? Or what is I the see. ideal situation? Because Makes then sense. only you can say how good are you mm -hmm. towards that ideal Makes sense. Makes sense. So in case of AI pipeline work, we are trying to build a UI uh, where we where user can go and query, and we are trying to include a feedback loop there saying whether they have used this pipeline to see their experimentation or whether if the re results produced are relevant or knowledgeable or useful to the user. And in case of food, if a downstream application of app is being built on top of this model, then based on if the user is uh, taking the food based on the recommendations or reasonings provided, I think that might be considered as a uh, uh, acceptable explanation, I think. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think in this case, for example, uh, you need an application for type 1 diabetes uh, in uh, pediatric type 1 diabetes. And so there was a, a doctor who, uh, you know, was collaborator. She has to first uh, typically uh, review to see how it will be. And, you know, in uh, similar projects, we had like Dr. Nasimul and her staff of five clinicians. Here is the review. Before you ever get to the end user, to do that, it then is going to affect health issues. Um, it's a very uh, you know, challenging job in the uh, more or the IRB and other aspects of it. So, uh, doing it with the clinician is the is the fastest and best way to do it. Uh, if you want to do it, you have the resources to do that. Right, but when if the user is looking at the process recommendation, mm -hmm. the end user, mm -hmm. would they know that this has been expert annotated versus mm -hmm. not, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so the so basic question which I have is for you to consider is what is the ideal answer? Okay. What is the ideal answer mm -hmm. for that process? recommendation or the explanation got it got it right when do we know that explanation is good versus a, a garbage text got it got it makes sense okay. yeah thank you um so now on to the list of explanation sorry list of terms that we saw in our thesis statement what does that mean in each of uh, the domains that we are trying to solve the problem for for example in cooking process uh, the cooking process graph looks as follows which consists of ingredients in cooking actions uh, interconnected in the following manner 
And in the, the AI pipeline process graph looks as follows. The equivalent of ingredients in AI pipeline graph is the artifacts that, that are present in the pipeline, such as uh, the data sets, the models, the hyperparameters are the equivalent of ingredients. And the equivalent of cooking actions in AI pipeline are the actions that are being performed on this artifact, such as uh, data selection or data set pre-processing being performed on the data sets, model training being performed on the models, and, and so on. So how does this cooking process graph becomes a cooking process knowledge graph that is through multi-contextual grounding where we collect uh, a knowledge about the entities that are present in the graph. For example, steak is a red meat and it's a type of a pork. Uh, the diabetes label is it is unhealthy uh, because it's a red meat and does not have any carb but has a lot of cholesterol and, and so on. The combination of ingredients on uh, ingredients and cooking actions also produce certain outputs. For example, grilling steak at higher temperature is pretty, going to produce traces of carcinogens. We collect the interaction as well and also a bunch of inference rules. For example, here it says that red meat leads to, it's related to colorectal cancer. Exactly the context and how, how uh, the representation currently is in the form of semantic properties to each of them. And the rules are represented in the form of query constraints or constraints uh, over the data that we have. And I'm sorry, Rakshit, what was the other Which question? Context, what are the multiple contexts? Multiple contexts. So for example, when we take uh, one ingredient here, we collect the category of the ingredient. For example, if you take butter, we collect the category of the ingredient. What is the smoking point of that particular fat? Because... Uh, Cooking beyond a smoking point is going to introduce trans fat and other harmful components. So that's another context. This, these are domain contexts, and we also have uh, the chronic condition-based context, such as for diabetes, what this means. It's considered unhealthy fat because it has saturated fats. And what is the nutrition profile for someone who is, uh, for say, example, trying to follow a keto diet and the carb-rich foods are not so uh, suitable. So these are the multiple contexts under which we are collecting the information. You have explicitly mentioned the context. Uh, okay. As the person you're presenting is not really clear. Got it. Got it. The equivalent in AI pipeline process graph, uh, multi contextually grounded AI pipeline process graph, looks as follows. For example, here, data set again is grounded in multiple contexts, for, uh, such as it's a text data set, it's a question and answering data set, uh, it's a data set used for uh, it's a medical domain data set and what is the data set size and the description of the data set and so on. And similarly, we have an example for the model and other artifacts as well. So a sample here is presented based on, uh, to give an idea of what are all the list of uh, context in which the knowledge is being gathered. And to the multimodality aspect, so in case of cooking, we have ingredient images, recipe images, along with the recipe text. And in case of AI pipeline domain, we have text, numerical data, and figures of how these pipelines look like are the results of these uh, results of these pipelines as well. And we also have uh, URL links to file and code, uh, which hasn't been integrated yet, but we do have access to those as well. And to the explainability aspects, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, let's say you have a seasoning butter and that interacts in some particular way under some heating condition and that produces thinner stable mm -hmm. of your food. Mm -hmm. And if it interacts in a different way under some other heat condition, this will reverse its stable. Mm -hmm. But in that same first time, before mm -hmm. the night, mm -hmm. is there an equivalent like that in the AI pipeline? Yeah. Uh, so here, the data set selection can be, uh, so there are group specific works such as data set uh, sub-selection or data set pre-processing. So based on the pre-processing techniques that we are choosing, the state S1 or S2 can, sorry, the state S1 here, probably S2 can change. So when we take image, there are a list of possible data augmentations that we perform. What combination of data augmentation that we are performing based on that, the S2 might change for each case. And uh, I think that brings us to the explainability. We are trying to address uh, two two aspects of uh, explainability, reasoning and traceability. Oh, oh um, no, Risa, but now I'll try to reiterate the question here. Sorry about that. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, so, and for the explainability, we are trying to uh, explain, sorry, uh, address two aspects, reasoning and traceability. So, in case of food, given a food item is not suitable and a list of reasons being provided, we try to identify alternate uh, food items. So, which refers as counterfactual reasoning. And given we identify alternate set of food items, we try to give explanations as why this particular list of recipes is similar to what the user, uh, sorry, given input, input given by the user that is termed as analogical reasoning. And given we also provide the source of where this information is coming from, that is uh, defined as traceability. And similarly in AI pipeline domain, the explanations are provided as why this pipeline is relevant to what the user has requested for, which is analogical reasoning. And uh, we also provide the source of the pipeline in the form of a published paper or in the form of a GitHub repository, which refers to as traceability. And that ensures reproducibility of the pipelines as well. And the rest of the uh, uh, presentation is structured as follows. We are trying to apply this explainable process recommendation technique in two, do two domains, explainable food recommendation and explainable AI pipeline recommendation. It consists of four major sections, entity extraction, knowledge graph, sorry, graph construction and multi-contextual grounding of these graphs and explainable process recommendation. So the section one corresponds to research aim one, section two and three corresponds to research aim two and section uh, four corresponds to research aim three. On to the explainable food recommendation for diabetes. So to start with, why do we need food recommendation? Diet plays a vital role in our day-to-day well-being and also management in management of chronic diseases. We saw in our previous slides that there is a lot that goes into the recipe. Uh, the uh, information about the ingredients, cooking actions, uh, the interaction between ingredients and cooking actions, what does that uh, do? Does, does it produce any harmful substances or uh, is it going to alter the nutrition content and etc. And we also need to analyze a given recipe in the disease contextual information as well. For example, potato is a healthy carbohydrate but has high glycemic index, so it's not suitable for certain uses with diabetes as well. And I didn't, if I really like the recipe, identifying an alternative recipe and alternative set of cooking actions is also a challenge. So for these reasons, we require, uh, we propose explainable food recommendation, the one that we presented in our motivation slide. So let's see what has been done in the literature to address, um, address the challenges related to the explainable food recommendation work that we have. Before 2016, these are the list of techniques used for uh, food recommendation, collaborative filtering, knowledge-based recommendation, clustering, or mat matrix factorization. The works after 2016 or 2017 tried to harness the deep, uh, generalization power of the deep learning models, where given an image, identify a relevant recipe, uh, or given an image, identify a similar image and identify the recipe associated with it. There's one work on multimodal and knowledge graph that utilizes recipe image, text, uh, video, and audio along with a graph created based on uh, user in, user characteristics. They call it a knowledge graph, but when reading into it, it seems so like a graph of user characteristics. And uh, there are a group of works which generates gra uh, graph embeddings over, sorry, knowledge graph embeddings by utilizing a graph neural network over the knowledge graph. So food knowledge graph is one famous knowledge graph, which is an interconnected network of ingredients and uh, probably some other information such as the definitions. And graph net and also graph learning networks where they utilize again a graph attention network that utilizes ingredients, recipes, and the comments of the recipes to identify if a recipe is suitable for user's health condition and food preferences. There are also a list of works on recipe modification based on ingredient co-occurrences. The recipe is modified, uh, meaning a given ingredient is substituted with the ingredient which it co-occurs the most. And based on the nutrition profile of the ingredients, uh, a given recipe is modified with an alternative ingredients. Uh, there are works on generative modeling approaches as well. Given a recipe and the list of ingredients to be substituted, it generates a new recipe out of it. And the last one is uh, an interesting work which generates a pseudo recipe based on a given query constraint. And that pseudo recipe is used to identify a list of similar recipe that present, uh, that are present in the database. Now, looking at the literature review, the challenges still remain, but more specifically, none of the works utilized uh, the cooking methods or took into account the effects of cooking methods. And none of the work also utilized the multi-contextual knowledge about the entities that are present in our cooking process graph. And the reasoning and traceability aspect of the recommendation is not focused in the current work that has been done so far. So mapping those to the research aim and reiterating them again, can we leverage the domain knowledge to complement the ground lack of ground truths data? 
and grounding of the entities with multi-contextual knowledge for construction of process knowledge graph and utilizing this multi-contextually grounded process knowledge graph for explainable process recommendation. That brings us to the framework suited for the food recommendation work. And in case of food recommendation, we have two types of input. One can be in the form of a, just a simple query constraint, high fiber pasta without meat, where the user knows what they are looking for. Or the user can give an input uh, food item and, uh, in the form of an image or a recipe title or a text and ask if that particular food item is suitable. Uh, similar to the framework that we presented before, it has a graph construction framework and ground grounding framework. We'll go over each of these sections one by one. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just about terminology. Uh, because you're going through the framework, mm -hmm. what is the difference between a process graph and a process knowledge graph? Okay. What is the information in a process graph? And what is the information in a process knowledge, knowledge graph? graph. Uh, so for the uh, people online, the question is, what is the difference between a process graph and a process knowledge graph? So process graph is where we just constructed the graph inclu that includes ingredients and cooking actions and interaction among them. It does not have any other additional contextual information. So for example, in case of potato, uh, it needs to, we need to identify the list of knowledge sources or additional context about what potato means. And we include that information as semantic properties. So that is uh, termed as a process knowledge graph, the grounded version. And the one without any additional information, just the terms is called, sorry, just the ingredients and cooking actions is referred as process graph. So actually you may want to be a little more formal about it mm -hmm. because um, uh, this definition should be independent of the, of the domain. Mm. Okay, so because you have grounding here, Right. That has nothing to do with the process description. Right. Or, or is it? So you want to be sure. Uh, and, and the corresponding question which will come up is that there are also languages. Mm -hmm. So how is the process the way you are describing different from a workflow description? Right, right. And, and similarly, the notations. So yeah. For example, there are data elements. There are execution or action elements, mm -hmm. right? So are you referring to the data elements as a rectangle or mm -hmm. you are referring to the action uh, things, right? Uh, by circles, mm -hmm. or, sorry, uh, by squared, rectangle, yeah, squared rectangle, sorry, rounded rectangles. Exactly, you know, right. just clarify that. Okay. What is knowledge? Because these things, you know, as you're uh, traversing across two domains, which is mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. you want to formalize these first. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Uh, okay, got it. Thank you. I, I think you're mixing between them. Got it. Thank you. Um, so now on to the framework. Let's go over one by one to see what each of these uh, components, uh, how each of these components are executed. Starting with uh, research aim one also brings us to the section aim, sorry, section one, which is entity extraction with limited label data using knowledge. And that brings us to the red box section of the framework where the goal here is given a recipe in a natural language text, we need to extract the ingredients and cooking actions present in them. So the extracting ingredients was a pretty straightforward approach because the list of ingredients are usually given uh, in the recipe. We just need to know the order in which it is going to be utilized. So we know that which cooking action is being performed on a given uh, ingredient. So given a recipe text, we separated each of these sentences, passed it to a spacey NLP parser and get the noun chunks out of it. The nouns can be ingredients or other uh, tools and utensils used in making a particular recipe. So we did a IOU mapping computation with the list of recipes that is provided in the beginning of the recipe. So the list of ingredients provided in the beginning of the recipe to extract the corresponding ingredients present in each of these cooking instructions. And it's a part of a published work cited below. And in case of cooking actions, it was not a straightforward approach because we need a detailed, uh, sorry, we need a nicely annotated ground truth data like this. And we do not have that available anywhere. Not the list of cooking actions are listed like, um, listed like the ingredients we have in the recipe. So we went ahead and created our own data set constituting 10,000 cooking instructions, uh, which comes from 1,000 randomly selected recipes from recipe 1M data set. And this now seems like a pretty straightforward NER or a multi-class labeling problem. But when we tried with these models, it did not give us satisfactory results. So when we looked into the data set, we found the following challenges. So here we have two sample cooking instruction, and we have a lot of irregularities here. So the number of words that correspond to cooking actions versus the number of words that correspond to other information such as ingredients, utensils, and any other information is uh, quite quite uh, sparse. And similarly, uh, 
even within the cooking actions, the word boil appears way more than the word broil across the entire data set. And here we are dealing with uh, text written in natural language of variable uh, length sentences. And here we have more, two sentences actually conveying the same, but ha using different words. So due to these statistical irregularities, we went ahead and created our own small scale generative model, which is based on polynomial approximation based aggregation, uh, which is robust to the statistical irregularities which we presented in the previous slide. So we went, uh, took the data set that we annotated or created and used that to train the CookGen model. And since it gave results somewhere around uh, 97 to 98%, we uh, took the trained version of that model to generate inference for unseen cooking instructions. And, and so we obtained the corresponding cooking actions for a given cooking instruction. Given that we extracted cooking actions and cooking, uh, sorry, cooking actions and ingredients, let's see how we can construct the cooking process graph out of it. That deals with the red box section of the framework here, where we extracted the ingredients and cooking actions, and we are trying to uh, construct a process graph, uh, which tells us uh, the interaction among the ingredients and cooking actions. Now, this seems to be a straightforward problem because given a cooking instruction, we already extracted ingredients and cooking actions present in them. Also, we thought when we looked at the cooking instruction, it turned out to be a little bit more challenging. Here, the cooking instruction is mix, mix butter and steak seasoning and marinate the steak. The action mix is being performed on butter and the seasoning and marination is being performed on the steak. Now that requires a mapping like the one that we show here, but unfortunately, um, again, the ground truth data for such mapping is not available. So we turn to large la language models to see if we can leverage them to extract these patterns. Initially, we gave the entire recipe and asked it to extract these mapping. It did not do a good job and was hallucinating quite a bit. And then we gave just the instruction and ask it to generate the mapping. And again, the instances of hallucination reduced, but still it was not sufficient. So what we did was we reduced the generative search space of the model by providing, this is the cooking instruction. I have already extracted the ingredients and cooking actions. So use this and now only mine the pattern to get the mapping for me. And it did a really good job when uh, the search space is narrowed down by in the prompting. And when, once we got that information, we gave the information to an ingredient image, image crawler and got the ingredient images uh, for the database data set that we have. And the recipe images are already present in the database. Giving all of these to a construction module, we constructed a multi-model cooking process graph. Uh, now, this does not have any additional knowledge associated with it. And that brings us to the next section, multi-contextual grounding of cooking process graph mapping to research aim to, con to construct the cooking process knowledge graph. And that deals with the red box section of the framework here. And the green sections denote the sections which are done or completed. And before going into this knowledge, why do we need multi-contextual grounding? Let's say we have potato where uh, the source one tells me it's a healthy carbohydrate, source two tells me it's a, it has high glycemic index. And we have another vegetable, broccoli, which says uh, source one is a healthy carbohydrate, source two, uh, uh, sorry, source two tells me it's a low glycemic index. So if we take up sorry, if we take mashed potato and ask the recommender one, which uses only knowledge source one, the recommender is probably going to say the food item is suitable. But if we ask a recommender which uses both the knowledge source, it might tell that probably it's not suitable for users who cannot handle the sharp spike in the glucose, which is the high glycemic index. So in these cases, it might be helpful to find alternative uh, ingredient sources, which has low glycemic index, and we can recommend that to the users. <clears throat> Since food science is a domain which has existed for quite a while, there has been good amount of research done in this area. So we were able to find a lot of trusted knowledge sources and extensive knowledge sources as well, such as USFTA, ConceptNet, the Glycemic Index Search Database by Uni uh, University of Sydney, WebMD, Mayo Clinic, CDC, which gives information about the uh, chronic conditions, literature, which tells us interaction of ingredients and cooking actions, and Edamum and Flavor TV, where Edamum gives us the nutrition of ingredients and flavor DB provides the flavor of the ingredients as well. Uh, this work is going to be part of manuscript three, uh, which is listed down below. And given that we, I, we identified the knowledge sources, oops, sorry, given that we identified the knowledge sources, how did we attach it to the, uh, the process graphs that we have? So, in most of the cases, we try to do a string matching problem. If there is a carrot present in the knowledge source, if there is a carrot present in our database, we go ahead and map it directly. But in some cases, uh, the mapping is not straightforward. For example, the input from our database might be baby carrots or lemon, where 
where the knowledge source tells that it is a citrus. So we try to do a sentence. We utilized a pre-trained sentence transformer to generate an embedding to map these entities present in the graph with the knowledge source that we collected. And that brings us to section four, explainable cooking process recommendation, mapping on to research aim three. And before going into the actual recommendation, there's one thing we need to deal with, uh, which is retrieving recipe text from recipe images. So we saw in uh, the framework that there are different kinds of input that can uh, that a model can take in case of food domain. So it, the input can be in the form of a query constraint. Given uh, input query in the form of a constraint, we try to identify the recipes that satisfies the constraint. Or given a recipe title, identify go and query the recipe database and identify the recipe text from which ingredients and cooking actions can be extracted for further processing. Or given a recipe text, identify ingredient and cooking actions which can be used for further processing. Or given an image, what happens in this case? How do we identify recipe, uh, retrieve a recipe text out of it? So that deals with the red box section of the framework here. Given an image using some approach, we are going to get the recipe text out of it. So the existing works pose this problem as a cross-model retrieval problem where it learns the embedding space for a given recipe. First, it learns a image embedding or a text embedding and learns a text em image embedding and let's say, and learns a corresponding text embedding and utilizes a, a uh, objective function to bring them closer in the latent space. It does so for the rest of the recipes present uh, in the database. Now, this seems to be a good approach. Uh, yeah, it does so for the rest of the recipes present in the database and some sort of semantic regularization is applied on top where the recipes are grouped based on, for example, here class name, salads are grouped together and pies are grouped together. Now, let's say that we learn an embedding space where uh, we group it based on the class name bagels and burgers. Now, where does this new recipe go to, which kind of resembles both bagel and burger? Now, this is commonly called as intra-class similarity or intra-class variation or inter-class similarity in food domain. In order to mitigate this issue, we came up with a recipe similarity determinant approach, which uh, tries to compute a degree of similarity between two recipes based on the intuition that Similar recipes share similar ingredients, similar set of cooking actions, and shares a similar title as well. At the time of this work, the cooking actions were not extracted, so we utilized ingredients and uh, the recipe title present in them. We took this uh, intuition, the knowledge, and infused it into, into a model called KI Cook, which learned the embedding space, where it assembled the ingredients based on the degree of similarity computed by the recipe similarity determinant, rather than grouping them based on the class names. At the time of this experiment, since uh, the cooking actions were not extracted, we used just the ingredients, but we are currently working on generative modeling approaches, which utilizes both ingredients and cooking actions to infuse, uh, to determine the recipe similarity value. And the, the um, benefit of knowledge that is infused is reflected very well in the results. For given input query image, we asked a base model, which does not utilize the knowledge, but utilizes the same data set to extract the corresponding cooking, uh, so corresponding recipe. In other way, in other words, given a recipe image, identify what is the recipe or what is the food through cross model retrieval. So the base model returned Dili cheese muffins, whereas the KI cook model returned low carb eggplant parmesan. We have uh, in total three use cases presented here where the accuracy of the knowledge infused model being same, low or higher than the base model. In all the three cases, the knowledge infused model retrieved a relevant recipe for the given input image compared to the base model. And this is a part of a published work uh, cited below. And now on to the explainable food recommendation section, which uh, deals with the red box section of the framework here. Just a quick question. Yeah. What is a recipe? Is it a process? Uh, recipe is uh, the text information. So recipe consists of the recipe text, the recipe image, uh, list of ingredients present in it, and cooking actions in the form of a natural language. And we uh, we came up with metrics to extract the ingredients and cooking actions out of it. But your work is on process segmentation. Yeah. So is recipe a process? Yes, yes. Recipe is a process. Yeah. Do you want to formalize it? Accordingly. Okay, got it. Uh, and uh, so, yeah for the explainable process recommendation. So now that we constructed this recipe process graph, which consists of ingredients, cooking actions, uh, images, and also the multi-contextual grounding, how do we utilize it for explainable process recommendation? And that ma maps to the research aim three, where we uh, propose the following approaches to, uh, uh, to uh, yeah, following approaches for explainable process recommendation. 
where uh, the first approach is to utilize a rack based approach where we generate uh, embedding for each of the processes and retrieve the process the multi contextually grounded processes and use that multi contextual grounding to provide explanations in approach to come up with a custom heuristic function that utilizes an embedding based similarity or set set based similarity of semantic properties where the embeddings are generated utilizing a graph neural network algorithm over the node embedding such as uh, for the ingredients and cooking actions this will help us capture what are the potential cooking actions that can be performed on a given ingredient and for the approach three, given that we are using recipe one um data set, which consists of 1 million uh, recipes, it can be a graph database as well because we are grounding it with the knowledge. So we can we try to layer it with an LLM, which will translate the natural language query into a graph querying language, identify relevant recipes and return it to the users along with explanations. And that brings us to the summary section of this use case, where research aim one and two are executed and research aim three explainable process recommendation are the proposed approaches in the previous slide. And the current status of the framework looks as follows, where the red box section is the future work and the green sections are the one which are implemented and done. And the technical contributions of this section are as follows, where under research aim one, we have two sub contributions, knowledge infused multimodal clustering and polynomial aggregation based approximation and creation of multi-contextually grounded multimodal process knowledge graph is also a contribution to the domain. And there we have a sub contribution there, knowledge guided prompt engineering for relation extraction and cooking and uh, explainable process recommendation using multi-contextual grounding multi-model process knowledge graph is the future work. We have two published paper in this domain and manuscript three is the work that is under progress. And the specific future works to this domain are uh, knowledge enabled generative approaches for generating cooking instruction from recipes that utilizes both cooking actions and ingredients to generate a recipe similarity determinant and evaluating the proposed approaches of explainable process recommendation presented uh, in few slides before.